open your Bibles to the book of Daniel, chapter number 2. Amen. Daniel, chapter number 2. If you don't know where Daniel is, no better just to go back to the New Testament, Matthew, and start paging backwards. Amen. Some of you may, uh, you can relate to New Year's and what that means, and uh, I want to share a thought with you that I hope will be encouraging, challenging, helpful, and uh, will bring to life some dreams for you. But how many of you uh, uh, know that on New Year's, whenever that clock strikes midnight and New Year's is breaking, you'll, 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 uh, you'll hear fireworks going off, uh, you may hear some gunshots, uh, you may hear some hooping, some hollering, uh, some folks celebrating that a new year has begun. And so I think one thing that's always neat is to see fireworks and those displayed. And so I heard a story of a preacher who was traveling with his family, had a young family, and they were traveling on vacation. And uh, they were doing things economically, they were traveling non-stop in their car, and uh, they were passing several uh, uh, stores that sold fireworks. And his, his son said, Daddy, I just want to buy some fireworks. Can we stop? Can we buy some? Finally, after passing several, uh, the, the, his, uh, the dad said to his son, Son, I'll let you go into the fireworks store and buy some. And so he went in, he saw Roman candles, he saw a fire uh, uh, crackers, he saw lady fingers, uh, uh, rockets, all kinds of things. And so he bought some and he came out. And when he got in the car, his dad said, No, son, you keep them till when we go home. And when we go home, you're still not going to put them off, but you're going to wait for the next holiday. And when the holiday is, we'll celebrate the holiday with the fireworks. Well, if you're like most folks, a uh, holiday being a long way away, he put them up on a shelf, and guess what happened? He forgot about them. Holiday came, holiday went, and he forgot about them. And uh, uh, so finally one day that young boy grew up and he was a man, and his dad said, son, you'll never believe this. He said, but, but, but I found your fireworks. Remember that? And his son said, oh, dad, I remember that. He said, I tried to set them off, but they must have a shelf life, and they don't work. And so the son looked at his dad and he said, Dad, he said, that was a forgotten dream. A forgotten dream. I wonder if we this New Year's will think that all of us have probably had some dreams in our life. Dreams do not have shelf lives. Amen. No worries. Heaven has not forgot about your dream. And so I want to talk about that this morning in my message. This New Year's 2019, heaven doesn't forget about forgotten dreams. Some of you, you're, I can see the wheels in your mind is turning. Some dreams, some thoughts that you have. Let's look at Daniel chapter number 2 and let's start reading at verse number 19. There's much that's happening here. The Bible says, Then was a secret revealed unto Daniel. I'll give you more insight into this. Right now we're jumping in. You'll be like, I don't get this, Brother Seville. I'll give you the background in just a few moments. Then Daniel blessed the God of heaven. Daniel answered and said, Blessed be the name of the Lord God forever, for wisdom and might are His. And He changes the times and the seasons. He removes kings. He sets up kings. He gives wisdom unto the wise and knowledge unto them who, who know understanding. He reveals the deep and the secret things. And He knows what is in the dark. And the, the, the light dwells with Him. Amen. He knows the things that are in the dark. How many of you have ever had a dream before and you wake up and it's real? Or how many of you have ever had a vision of something that you want to do? They tell me that each one of us dream every night and we probably have two hours of dreaming a night. Now, most of the time, I wake up and I don't remember a thing that I've dreamed. And probably a lot of you are the same way. Some of you may remember that. But, but they say your 
our dreams take place when we're in that rapid eye movement or what we may have heard before as REM. That, that, that sleep where we are in REM, we have those dreams that take place in, in, in our minds. And so every one of us have had a dream in our life and we continue to dream. And many of you had dreams when you were young or when you were a young adult or maybe even older in your life. You have this dream and something that you want and, and you want it to come to pass, but some of us have put it on the shelf and it's long forgotten about. Some of you have prayed about things and God has given you desire. God has given you vision. God has given you a dream. And somewhere in the middle of life, you forgot about that. But God is the waker of forgotten dreams. I want you to think about that this morning. Forgotten dreams. Dreams approach in the night and they come kind of uh, as a fearful creature. They run around in our subconscious. They run around in our unconscious mind. And, and so during the night they take place kind of like a, a, a creature, if you would, crawling around in our mind. And then the light of day. And then the dreams are forgotten. Some of us are that way with our lives. The dreams <coughs> are forgotten. But God is a waker up of forgotten dreams. God is a caretaker of those dreams. We read here in the Bible that there was a king, his name is Nebuchadnezzar. And Nebuchadnezzar, uh, uh, he reigned over uh, uh, Babylon. It's an ancient, it's a powerful kingdom. And the story is told throughout the book of Daniel. And early in his reign, the king, uh, 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 his dreams were troubled. And the Bible says uh, 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 in verse number one of the chapter that I read, uh, and in the second year of the reign of King Nebuchadnezzar, Nebuchadnezzar dreamed dreams wherewith his spirit was troubled and his sleep was broken from him. And if you ever have a dream and you're troubled and it breaks your sleep from you, so this is where Nebuchadnezzar is. His sleep is broken from him. Uh, 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 and so he called for the, the wise men. He calls for the magicians. He calls for the astrologers and, and the sorcerers. And he says, he says to him, he said, I, I, I dreamed the dream and my spirit was troubled to know the dream in verse number three. And so here it is that it's the business of wise men and these uh, individuals that he calls to come and, 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 and they interpret dreams. They do for us what, what, what Sam Walton did. He gives us groceries and everything. He provides it all for us at Walmart, Right. And so, Brother Craig, my girls have adapted your word now, and they call Walmart Wally World. Yep. And so, uh, uh, so what Sam Walton did for us in providing, that, that's what these, these wise men did. And so, uh, you can almost hear the bored tone of their voice, because they were trained in this for many, many years early on. They say, now tell me, what is the content of your dream? And so they come and they say to Nebuchadnezzar, tell me what, 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 what dream that you dreamed and I'll provide the meaning for it. And so the Bible says in, in verse number 10 and 11, the Chaldeans answered the king and said, there is not a man upon the earth who can show the king's matter. Therefore, there is no king, no lord, no ruler uh, that would ask such a thing of any ma ma magician or astrologer or Chaldean. Why did they say this to, to Nebuchadnezzar? Because Nebuchadnezzar had a dream. However, Nebuchadnezzar was troubled by his dream, but he couldn't even remember his dream. And he said, I'm going to pour out punishment upon you and upon your household and anyone who can't tell me my dream and give me an interpretation of it. I'll be like me saying to you, Al, I dreamed a dream last night and I can't remember a thing about it. You need to tell me what I dreamed and you need to tell me what that dream means. How many of you think that would be crazy to ask someone? That would be off the wall. I mean, I can't remember my dream, and I'm asking you to remember my dream. And more than telling you what, what, I, what I dream, I need you to give me an interpretation of it. And if you don't do it, then I'm going to punish you. And so here it was that Daniel and his friends, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, 
They have the same thing given to them. Now when the magicians and the, the astrologers and the wise men, they went away chewing their fingernails, knowing that this was an impossibility. But Daniel and his friends, they went to God and said to God, God, we need for you to reveal to us what this dream is. And so the Bible says, then there was the secret dream revealed to Daniel in a night vision because he and his friends went to God and said, God, tell us what it is that King Nebuchadnezzar dreamed and show us that dream and show us the interpretation of the dream as well. Can I tell you something? God is still the caretaker of forgotten dreams. God is still the caretaker of forgotten dreams. Many of you out there have dreams and goals and plans and visions in your life and maybe they've been put on a shelf and they've been forgotten about, but God does not forget about those goals and those dreams and those visions that you have, particularly when they've been made in a place of prayer and commitment to God Almighty. God remembers them. And I believe that the, at the beginning of 2019, it's time to pull out the forgotten dreams or ask God, what are those things that I forgot? about in my life, those goals, those things that I want, what are they? Remind me and help me bring them back to me. The king had God-given dreams. And I need to tell you, so do we. God speaks in a variety of ways. He speaks to the Word of God. I believe He speaks to nature. He, believe, he speaks through our friends. He speaks to our family. He even speaks to our enemies. God has a way of speaking. But one method of communication that I'm certain of is that God speaks through dreams. In Numbers chapter number 12, verse number 6, even Moses gave a, a, a credit and, 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 and told us that God speaks in dreams. And so, here is the dream. God tells Daniel... Daniel, the dream of Nebuchadnezzar was that there's a huge cre uh, a creature that, that has a head of gold and a chest of silver, legs of iron, and he gives him this image, and he says in the dream, uh, there, uh, the, 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 the image, uh, uh, there's a stone that strikes it, and, and, and the whole earth is, is, is full of growing stones, and, and so the dream is being unfolded to Daniel, and, 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 and it's revealed to him in light when it was given to Nebuchadnezzar, in the dark. Amen. God sometimes gives dreams in the light. Amen. Uh, in the dark that they can be revealed in the light. I believe this. That God wants to give us a dream for 2019. God doesn't want us wandering aimlessly. Our lives were designed with a purpose. Our li lives were designed to have goals in mind. Amen. That we press toward the mark. Amen. So as God gives us dreams in the dark right now, we don't know everything about 2019, but I believe today that God can birth a dream to us in this day that seems dark. Amen. Versus the light of 2019. But God can give the dream in the dark, but God can reveal it in the light. Amen. He did that for Nebuchadnezzar. Nebuchadnezzar's dream came in the dark, but God revealed it to Daniel in the light. Amen. God give me a vision. God give me a plan. God give me a purpose for 2019. Mm -hmm. I believe that God wants joy in our life. I believe that God wants growth in our life. I think God does want to uh, do great things in our life and even expand our borders. And He does it in the dark. And it will be revealed in the light. There was a study that was given of 200 successful people in their life. And they found that there was one common factor between all these 200 successful people who did well and succeeded in their life. They had a dream. And they would not let anything detour them from the dream. They held on to the plan. They held on to the dream. And they seen it come to fulfillment. Amen. Do you want to be a spiritual person? Do you want to do great things for God? It starts with a dream. It starts with a goal. It starts with a plan. And saying, God, birth this in me. And then you hold to it. Amen. When tough times come, busy schedules come, when distractions come, you say, no, I will not be detoured from the plan that God has for me. 
God wants to do something in our life in 2019. Listen, if you're not faithful to church, I believe that if you grab on to a dream that I'm going to be faithful to church in my life, amen, God can help you in 2019. Even deeper than just church. And you need to be in church. Amen. You say, I'm going to read the Word of God. And I'm going to read till I understand it. I'm going to read till the Spirit of God speaks to me. Grab onto the dream and run with it. Amen. I'm going to live life in the Spirit. Amen. I'm going to pray. I'm going to have communication with God every day. If you hold to that, 2019 can be successful with you accomplishing that. It starts with a dream. Woodrow Wilson said this, We grow great by dreams. All big men are dreamers. They see things in a soft haze of a spring day or in the red fire on a long winter's evening. Some of us let those great dreams die, but others nourish and protect, nourish them through the bad days until the sunshine and light appears. It appears unto those who sincerely hope that their dreams will come true. I believe that when we are little children and we hear that story once upon a time and this dream is birthed, in our life. I believe that that is not only birthed by traditions and stories, but I believe that can be birthed by God. That God gives us a dream and we hold to it and we nourish it until we see God work and move. Do you believe that you can live a healthy life physically, spiritually, mentally? As we hold on to the dream, God can do it in us. See, we've all been dreaming since the beginning of time. Think about this. We've all been dreaming since the beginning of time. Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden and everything is beautiful and everything is perfect and sin comes into the Garden of Eden. And since that time, what have we dreamed about? We've all dreamed about a beautiful garden. We've all dreamed about a place where there's harmony and there's unity and there's peace. We all dream of that. Since the beginning of time, there's been a dream that God puts in us. But I need to tell you that if we live life without a dream, it's like a train trying to run to a particular destination without a track. It's like an airplane trying to make its destination without a sky. Amen. It's like a ship trying to make its destination without a sea. Amen. Every one of us in here, we need a dream. Mm -hmm. Are you with me? Right I'm telling you, I believe that this message is for us for 2019. Amen. We need a dream. <laughs> and we need to hold to it. And we need to trust God with it. Amen. We need a God purpose filled dream. Amen. Amen. So here it is. The king says, how do I fit into this picture? He doesn't like it, but he's told. God gives us a dream. How do we fit into the picture? How do I become that soul winner? How do I become that spiritual leader? How do I become that God? How do I become that perfect person who is, who is rooted and grounded in the Word of God and in the place of prayer? Because God wants us to be a dream. And God wants us to play to it. It's amazing. If we're going to find any type of plant, the thing that we want is we want it to get some rooting system. We want it to get grounded. God gives us a dream. And that he wants us to get grounded in it. Helen, Helen Keller said this The only truly happy people are people who have found a cause bigger than themselves to live for. There's something bigger and better to live for. I heard all around the sanctuary this morning folks saying something they were thankful for. They were thankful for family because it's bigger than them. They weren't just living for themselves. They were living for family. They're thankful for church people. They're not just living for, for themselves, but they're living for the kingdom of God. It's finding something that is bigger. 
But I need to tell you something. Dreams do not come with handles. They don't come equipped in a way that we can grab onto them and not let them go. They can become elusive. They can become slippery. They can become easily lost. And so in Daniel chapter number 1, we read of King Nebuchadnezzar. He sees God's strength. And in Daniel chapter number 2, he discovers God's secret. But I need to tell you something about Nebuchadnezzar. He forgets who God is. The way to lose our dream is to forget who God is and the dream that He gives. It doesn't come with handles this morning. It's slippery. We forget about dreams sometimes. Our greatest human failures can be traced to amnesia because we forgot about things and our visions become vicarious. We read about this even in the book of Acts. You read about Simon Peter. He has this, this vision on the rooftop. And, 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 and God tells him how the gospel is going to be dispatched not only to the Jews but to the Gentiles. And he starts out well, but he soon forgets about the vision that God has given to him. It's easy to forget about the vision. Let me say something. Let me say this in the kindest way. We think about soul winning in a great way over these past several months, and particularly in the past several weeks as we reached out during Black Life. But the vision's not over in building America or God Church and uh, reaching people for the kingdom of God. Amen. We can't become elusive to the, to the dream and to the vision. People need the Lord. Amen. God challenges us to win the lost. And so it's easy to forget. We often worship at the altar of forgetfulness and our minds become dreamless and our eyes become visionless and our spirits can become listless. God wants us to dream. Listen to this. Once I knew the sense of freedom, once I saw the glittering face of enchantment, once I felt the love of nature, once I felt the magical fragrance of flowers, once I heard the song of mystics and talked to the animals and lived the life of fantasy, and I climbed the highest mountains, once I was uh, adventurous and was excited by the strike strikest danger, but it's gone. Where did it go? Where did it go? You know what happens? Somewhere in the middle of life, we lose the dream. Forgotten dreams. Our ideas breaks way to haunt all. God wants us to have a dream. I believe in the Word of God. I look at someone who had a dream and he held to the dream. Do you know who I'm talking about? His name is Joseph. He's just a young boy and he has this dream that uh, uh, the, the sun, moon, and the other stars bow down before him. He's binding up sheep and all the sheep bow down before his. He knew that his family would one day bow down before him. Not everyone will buy into your dream. You understand? Not everyone understands the things of God. Not everyone understands the vision that God gives you for your life. And so uh, you got to protect it and you got to be careful. And even if others don't buy into it, you got to know that God's working in you. And you can't dream for everybody else. You've got to dream for yourself. So here it is that, 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 that Joseph dreams a dream and his brethren are jealous and they don't understand so they sell him into slavery. We're very familiar with the story. But did the, did the dream die when he's separated from his, his family and those that were his comfort level and those that he knew? The dream didn't die even when he was sold. Even when he was betrayed by Potiphar's wife and he was mis misrepresented. The dream did not die. He held on to the dream. And even in the, uh, the prison where he was forgotten for interpreting dreams, he still still held on to the vision that, 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 that God had given him until one day he seen his brother come and bow down before him. And what a blessing it was as, as his father, uh, as I shared last week, uh, his father blessed uh, all of the, the 12 tribes. Uh, he saw that because he held to the vision. We've got to have a dream. you got to have a dream. Let me ask you, it's 2018, or maybe it's many years ago. Has it stole your dream? God is the caretaker of forgotten dreams. You may say, this isn't where I want to be in my spiritual life. This isn't where I want to be in my life. 
if God broke the dream in you, maybe you forgot about it. But God has not. Let me say this. I love Daniel. And this is something I love about Daniel. Because nobody else could remember the dream of Nebuchadnezzar, but Daniel could because God gave it to him. I wonder what it would be like if we had a church full of people that could get a glimpse of what God could do in other people's lives and could also grab hold of the dream that God gives others. If we could breathe life into that. Amen. Don't you love when someone comes and they put their arm around you and they breathe life into you? They tell you, I know you can do this. I remember your desire to do this. And they grab hold of it. And they, they, they're, they're a reminder. I love that. I, 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 I love how marriage works. Amen. That You know, uh, when, when, when I'm the hardest on myself, my wife is my greatest champion. And telling me, you can do this. This is what you want to do. And some of you guys out there know about that. Some of you ladies out there know about that. Having someone believe in you and catching the dream for you. Amen. I want want God to give us God-given dreams for 2019 for our lives, things that we want to have accomplished. Amen, Lord, you said that. Pray for your grandchild. Amen. Thank God, well, that's a dream, that's a goal, that's a vision. Amen. Some of you out there are thinking about jobs and where God would have you be in your career path. Do you not believe that God has a plan for you? Amen. God has the right job to provide, amen, a challenge and a purpose for you, but also also financially for you so that you can provide for yourself and for your family. God has all those things in mind. Amen. Grab hold of the dream. Do you not believe God has a big plan for this church? Amen. That we're going to feel the presence of God. That we're going to see the working of the Holy Ghost. Amen. That we're going to see the Spirit of God in action. That we're going to see souls saved. That we're going to see our lives delivered. We're going to see bodies healed. Amen. Because God gives us a dream. And together we hold to the dream. And we see God see it through. Amen. I'm telling you this morning. Jehovah God is the one who provides. Jehovah Shammah, He's the one who's there. But I also believe He's Jehovah, the caretaker of forgotten dreams. What are those dreams that you have for your life? God is the caretaker. Sister Holly, if you come to the piano, I had some other things I wanted to say. But I simply want to say this to us this morning. What are you trying to make? You may say, Brother Sibyl, I'm not really thinking too much, Pastor, about anything except just getting through 2019. Now, I don't mean this harsh to you, but that's all you're going to do is just get through. I'm not looking to just get through. I'm looking to accomplish some things. God has designed us with a purpose. Not just to survive or to exist. But God has created us with a purpose so we can thrive. And if God just simply needs to show you a dream, you may say, I feel like I'm in the dark for 2019. We all are. We all are. I don't know what's ahead in 2019. But I believe that God can give a dream in the dark that can be revealed in the light of 2019. Do I have some folks that says, but they should go, I want to dream big for God. I want to dream big. I want to dream big. I want God to drop the dream in my heart. Maybe some folks, it's about being a better parent or working on some things in your personal life. The Lord is about personal development, but I think outside of Christ, there's real no personal development. We can't take care of our bodies as a temple. That's a big goal for folks in the year. We can't take care of our bodies because Christ can give us the dream. 
cheap. Or if there are financial things, God can help you. But if there are personal things that God wants to do in your life, would you grab a hold of it? And would you let God work in you? This morning, I see the time. No service tonight. We'll be eating after morning worship. But could you do this? Could you come and say, God, here I am, God. Would you give me a dream that I can see come to light in 2019? And with that, this is a full one or two. This is for everybody here. Let's come and grab hold of the dream. Amen. I'm going to put the offering plates out the back. Put your tithe and offering. Amen. Whenever you're done. Amen. But let's come. Let's get a dream. Let's get a dream from God. Or maybe if there's a forgotten dream of years gone by, God has not forgotten. Grab hold of the forgotten dream and bring it to life. Let's give it a